Well, hello, Great and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? Wow, it's already Thursday this week. I hope y'all had an awesome day today. I did. I actually got quite a bit done. I uh, took off a lot of stuff on Seth's computer that was my stuff, my pictures and stuff, and put them on a backup drive. And so that feels pretty good. It doesn't feel very organized in the backup drive, but... I guess I can do that another day. Let's see that this is recording. There we go. All right. Well, tonight we are going to do Psalms 25. And I have not looked at Psalms 25. Uh, but I am sure that it is just as good as Psalm 1 through 24. They have just been so great. I just, I love Psalms. It's just one of my favorite places to go. And we may read Proverbs 25. For some reason, I wrote that down too. So we'll see what Proverbs 25 is about also. And Psalms 25. Psalms and Proverbs. And as I wrote that down, I go, well, I wish I would have mirrored as I went along. But I didn't. So it's okay. I may start doing that from now on, but I may not. All right. Well, I'm just a teeny tiny bit late. I get, I start watching things on YouTube and then start listening to um, true crime stuff. And um, I don't listen to a lot of it, but there's just certain um, cases that I start listening to, and I want to stay until the end. I want to stay until they catch the murderer, the perpetrator, whatever. Anyway, all right, well, I'm going to pray, and then I've got to go get my Bible, because I cleaned my desk off today. I'm quite excited that I got it cleaned off today. I have all this room right now, but I'm sure it will be a mess before long. All right, God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. We thank you and we praise you, God. We, uh, we trust you, God. We thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and magnificent and powerful, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But yet you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, God. You are faithful. You are trustworthy. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we cry out to the lost. We just pray, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to remember the relationship that they once had with you, to return and to repent and to be reconciled. God, we also pray for all the disasters that are going on. There are so many, God. We just pray that you would be with these people, that you would meet their needs with the hands and feet of Jesus and the love and compassion of Jesus, that this, these disasters would draw them to you. We pray for all the people in Afghanistan, God, that are still there, people that need to get out, God. We just pray that you would remove the obstacles and that you would make a way, God, miraculously in the desert. And that, God, you would just be with them and they would feel your presence, that you would protect them. And all the other things that are going on, God, just so much, so much hatred, so much disunity, God. We just pray for unity under Jesus. And, God, we pray for SoCal Harvest this weekend, God. We pray that many people would be saved that uh, many people would come to know Jesus as their Savior. And that these many people would rise up for truth, God. We are the army of truth that is rising up against the lies, God, that are brought into this world. We stand on your truth completely. 
God, we just uh, also pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And we just pray that they would feel your presence. We pray today, God, for our nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. For our nation to feel your presence, God. For all generations to feel your presence. For all generations to accept Jesus as their Savior, God. We just pray for all these things. We pray throughout the world, too, for these things also. God, we pray for truth above lies. We pray that your truth would rise above all lies, that all truth would oppose the lies that we have been told for two years, going on three, going on three years, God. Just pray that your truth would reign. We know that Jesus has overcome and that Jesus will overcome. But we pray right now that truth would reign. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, well, let me get my Bible. I don't have anything here that I can use. My other Bible's down there too. I'll be right back. Sorry. Maybe I need a, a backup Bible. All right. Well, I got it. It wasn't too far away. Okay. Psalm 25. It is called a plea for deliverance and forgiveness. The Psalm of David. It says to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let me let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. We were just praying about truth. You know, God's truth is the only way. It's the only way. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all day. Remember, O oh Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sakes, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to, to such as keep his covenant in his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And not fear scary, oh, I'm afraid of God, but reverent fear, knowing who God is, knowing God is creator of all, God is sustainer of all, God is our provider, our protector, a reverent fear of knowing how powerful and how wonderful he is. Um, I lost my place. And he will show them his covenant. His eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me. For I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my pain. And forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many. And they hate me with a cruel hatred. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. 
Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. You know, we have been doing a study on the Old Testament. It's it's like a book a night on Wednesday nights. And what I have gathered through what we have been through is that Israel is so disobedient. Israel will cry out to God, God, please forgive us. Please draw us back to you. And then after a while, they're following after other gods and they're, you know, doing things that are an abomination to God. We are just like the Israelites. We do the same things that the Israelites do. We do. We are just like them. All right, well, let's move on to Proverbs. I don't have a study a study part for that. Um, my husband is on the phone. All right, if you hear anything in the background, it's not me. I'm not playing a radio or anything. He's on the phone. Okay, Proverbs 25. These also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from silver, and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king, and do not stand in the place of the great. For it is better that he say to you, Come up here, than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince whom your eyes have seen. Do not go hastily to court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame? Debate your case with your neighbor, and do not disclose the secret to another. Lest he who hears it expose your shame, and your reputation be ruined. It kind of sounds like gossip. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold it, in setting of silver. I like Proverbs, too. Sometimes it's hard to understand. Oh, my fan. I forgot. I had another computer here today. And I unplugged everything. Okay, I'm all plugged up now. All right. Um, like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold, is a wise rebuker to an obedient ear. Like the cold of snow is time of harvest, is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. By long forbearance, a ruler is persuaded, and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house, lest he become weary of you and hate you. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble it is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather, and like vinegar on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. You know, we are to be kind to our enemies people that don't like us, people that use and abuse us. We are still to be kind. We're to be loving because that's what Jesus called us to be. 
The north wind brings forth rain in a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. Again, backbiting, gossip. We need to abstain from that. That is sin. That's sin. A cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. Oh, I skipped this one. It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring in a polluted well. It is not good to eat much honey, so to seek one's own glory is not glory. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. We'll see if the, it says anything in here about this. Wow, it does. My study Bible does say quite a bit. I may have to go open my door because it's gotten hot in here. But we'll see if I can tough it out. Okay. So, where does it start? Wow. 25.1. Hezekiah, king of Judah, reigned about 250 years after Solomon. Hezekiah walked the way of wisdom and thus became one of the greatest kings since Solomon. King Hezekiah led a revival in the land and restored temple service. He wisely commissioned a group of his counselors and scholars to compile the Proverbs of Solomon. Many of these Proverbs use the literary device of comparison to teach truth. A stated likeness between the objects different classes using like or as is often, I'm sorry, my nose itches, is often found. YouTube will probably get that snapshot. They usually do. God has chosen not to reveal everything about himself. God conceals some things, but what is needed in order to obey him is revealed clearly. The king must investigate God's revelation to lead his people rightly. These verses praise not academic research, but administrative ability. The king needs godly wisdom so that he can make wise decisions. A rebuke given in love and received with intent to obey at the right time, in the right place, and in the right way is more valuable than gold. Overdoing anything can be a problem. A disastrous difference exists between healthy appetite and greed or gluttony. False thinking suggests ecstasy, not nausea, ahead. Seldom carries the idea that a visit becomes more valuable when rare. Good manners take into consideration the feelings of others. Do not visit so often that you become a nuisance, but visit often enough that the visit is made special. As the saying goes, familiar Familiarity breeds contempt. Caring and compassion, not revenge, should characterize Christians. Kindness makes an enemy ashamed and invokes a blessing from God. Coals of fire are the feelings of guilt, which are far better felt now as shame than later as punishment. When a person shows compassion to his enemy, the Lord rewards him. What is happening inwardly affects the outward appearance, both positively and negatively. Of all the things a woman wears, her expression is most important. A woman who possesses a calm and gentle spirit has a peaceful countenance. I guess that's the, the contentious woman. We don't want to be a contentious woman. I think that's a grappy woman. I can be grappy especially if I haven't had coffee. But I don't, I don't constantly gripe like a lot of people do. I, uh, I do get upset because we're all human and we do get upset. But there's not much to be upset over, you know.
God is good and he takes care of all of our needs and he gives us a lot of our wants, a lot of our wants. I'm sitting in front of a brand new computer. Of course, I paid for it, but still, it it wasn't really a need. It was a want. My other one had gotten really slow, but now I'm using my old one for Seth, and it's working really great because it's a touchscreen. This one's not a touchscreen. I kind of like downgrade it a little bit, but I'm not doing quite the things that I used to do on that old computer. I don't do a lot of music videos or I don't need a CD burner. I don't, you know, I don't need those things anymore. Okay, well, that concluded our reading. If you have any comments about Psalm 25 or Proverbs 25, then please put it in the comments. I would love to read your comments. Probably nobody comments, and uh, I'd love to read your comments. Okay, how do we want to do our salvation message tonight? What did we talk about? We talked about truth. Yeah, what has truth on here? How about steps to peace with God? I just grabbed this one. It kind of matches my shirt. Kind of has fall colors. I got fall colors going on. It's fall, y'all, even though it's 90 degrees outside, or so it feels. Okay, steps to peace with God. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? Oh, I forgot to read what I wrote today. Oh, this will have to wait. I forgot about this. Okay, so today is day 18 of the 21 days of praying for our nation that President Trump called the nation to do through the Let Us Worship um, revival thing that they had at Washington, D.C. They had music and speakers, and it was great. People got saved. Anyway, so. That's what I have been doing, and I'm three days away of being done, and I've also cut down drastically on sugar uh, into, intake, which makes me feel better. Okay, day 18, praying for, praying our nation feels the presence of God for all generations, that all generations feel the presence of God. For all generations in our nation to see the availability of salvation, to see that salvation is available. I love this new song and message by For King and Country. Uh, for God is with us. It is an awesome song because God is with us 24-7, 365. He never leaves us. His love never changes for us. He is with us all the time. I love the lyrics of this song and the creativity of this video by Joel and Luke's brother. All, all of their videos are so awesome. And their music, too. Their songs are awesome, too. I have seen For King and Country in concert eight times. They are among my favorites, and this song is an example of why. I love to hear these guys speak their testimonies, their heart for Jesus, and their campaign for respect for women. God is the God of the valley and the mountain. He is always with us. He sent Jesus to die for us and to be our shepherd. And if we stay with our shepherd, we will have all we need. We will. We'll have all we need. Is Jesus your shepherd today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that is what I shared today. And we will get back to steps to peace with God. Most people have 
an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God. But the way must be chosen during this life. We have to choose now. We don't get a choice later. The choice has to be made in this life. We have to choose in this life that we've been given. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. So the Bible tells us how to achieve this peace with God. Step one, understand God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5.1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, John 3.16. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, John 10.10. 10. So why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling, the fulfilling abundant life that God intended for us to have? So why do you think most people don't have this? Admit, step two is admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey God and go their own willful way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. We choose to go our own willful way too many times. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its, its end is the way to death, Proverbs 14.12. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. So step three, discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, took our place and paid the penalty for our sin. Bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2 5. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3 18. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 8, Romans 6, 23. My eyes have been itching today. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. God has provi provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life. But each person must make a choice. So step four, embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Oh, my. That's just itching. Like, oh, I'm sorry. That's just itching like everything. Hold. 
I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 The Bible says to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Oh, that eye is bothering me. Hey, my friend Josie. How are you? My friend Josie is here. Um, so what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that the only way to find peace with God is the Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. Admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like this. So I'm going to, um, in words like these, I'm going to say this prayer and then I'm going to leave space. So if you would like to get saved, uh, just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and uh, the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And if you want to grow spiritually, then read the Bible every day. And start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus and pray. Pray to God every day and find you some praise music so you can praise every day. And if you did receive Jesus, then please put your name in the comments so I can pray for you also. All right. Well, I think that is what I came to share. I'm going to talk with my friend Josie for a little while and see how her day went. Um, then I'm going to get off here pretty quick so I can go and... Um, Wake Seth up. He's falling asleep while he was watching TV. I don't, I need him to sleep tonight so I can sleep. All right. Well, hey, Josie, how was your day today? Oh, it was good. It was a good day. I got quite a bit accomplished. I wormed my cat, which is the first time I've ever wormed a cat before. We'll see how it works. I'm supposed to worm her three times a day, but I think that's a little overkill. I'm going to try to worm her every day for like 14 days. That's a lot. 
three times a day for 14 days. That's a lot. A lot of wormer. I don't know if I have enough. It's a little bitty bottle. Anyway. It was a good day. Seth is doing really good in school. So I thought I would work on his computer and try to make it a little faster. And I don't think I made it any faster. But I did get all of my stuff off of it. So that was good. Oh, you don't know anything about worming cats? It's probably a good thing. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm going to like it or not, but I know that um, I don't want her to get sick. No, he's I'm homeschooling him. He's not going to school. I'm still homeschooling him. He's just doing good. I've switched him over to a computer instead of a tablet. I want to teach him how to communicate on the computer. And uh, he's doing really good. My old computer has a touch screen, so he can kind of use it as a tablet, but it's a, it's a bigger screen. And he also has a keyboard that he can type things on. So I'm teaching him how to do one finger typing. It's fun. That's how we all started. It's like one finger. That's how I text on my phone is with one finger. I'm pretty fast at it. Anyway, well, I'm going to get off of here. I hope you have an awesome evening, Josie. You and everybody else that comes to watch. And awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Yay, tomorrow's Friday. I don't know why I'm looking forward to the weekend. I don't have any plans. <laughs> but I just I have a more relaxed schedule on Saturdays than I do Monday through Friday. Maybe that's why. I usually do laundry. I do laundry catch up on Saturdays. All right. Well, much love to you, Josie, and everyone else. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.